That's it. That was always the most nerve-wracking time for me. We can see the bow seat there in the Thames crew on the right-hand side of your screen, just indicating that they're not quite straight and ready. Attention! And now the crews look ready to go. Go! The start should happen Attention. any minute. As we're away now in the wide fold, Vesta Rowing Club B and Thames Rowing Club B. It seems to be held there quite a long time. It's so nerve-wracking to just sit there. You just want to go to let us go. <laughs> I used to sit there and just have butterflies going through my stomach. It was the worst few moments of the entire race. Once you once you get going and there's sort of that explosion, the adrenaline kicks in and away you go. But it's like you go from you kind of your heartbeat's going, obviously the anticipation of what you're about to do, and then you're as soon as you're let free. It's like autopilot sort of thing. <laughs> Absolutely. But a great start here from Thames, who are closest to us on screen. They're pushing out to about a length lead in this very early stage of the race. They've taken the early advantage, you know, really got out nice and nice and clean, which is always important in a Coxus boat. You know, not letting the steering affect them in the first couple hundred meters. Getting comfortable with the course. There's obviously, there's always, you know, as an athlete, it doesn't seem there's a lot of space when you're in between the booms, but there is quite a lot when you're, you know, when you're kind of following it, you realise there's loads of space either side, but when you're racing, it just seems, I feel, you know, I used to feel really claustrophobic. That was the only way to explain it. It's funny, I was explaining this to someone yesterday as well, because I used to steer my, my boat when I competed and, and competed here. And there's something about the boys, even though you don't want to hit a boy on a course because it can bring you unstuck, which I've certainly experienced that, but it's it's a little bit more forgiving when you're steering over if you cross over this boom it's race over and we have unfortunately seen crews come a cropper on those booms so there is certainly that element of fear even though as you say there's plenty of room it does not feel no. like that when you're on the course and we can see a bit of a steering correction here from the thames crew just heading back over to their station really important that the crews stay on their station and don't move into the center because they will get warned by the umpire if they are creeping off their station. But that Thames crew, quite close to the boom there, but they look like they're fully in control, steering well. And you can see they've gone through the barrier marker, you know, head of Vesta on station one, which would be the Berkshire station. So station two's gone up first. And I always love that, that shot with the, the umpire's launch bang in the center of the call. So that's the kind of reference for each crew, knowing that the umpire's launch will stay in the middle and you're meant to be either side of that. And you heard at the start, you had Richard Phelps is the umpire for this particular race, giving the commands to the crew. So he's in charge of trying to keep them straight and get them down this course safely. Yes. <laughs> and we can see a little bit of a steering correction there from Vesta. And the Thames crew creeping over into the middle of the course. And of course, there's a little bit of psychology on this because no one wants to row in the puddles of a leading crew. So the Thames crew, they'll want to just send a message to Vesta to say, you're rowing in our dirty water, suck it up. But you do have to be careful that you're not going to cross too close to the centre line. And of course, get a warning from the umpires. But they're very comfortable here, at Thames. And Thames, I mean, what an incredible history they have as a club. And of course, here at Henley as well. Winning 80 times that's, at Henley Regatta. Incredible. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, began since 1860. Same year my boat club was founded. There you go, Sydney University wow. Boat Club. And then you've got Vesta on the other side, founded in 1870. And they're literally across the road from each other, aren't they? <laughs> And I know they're close on the on the uh, at the Tartley stretch, but surely they they don't want to be this close, you know, across from the stations. Yeah, they're having a few little steering difficulties, but I mean, it is incredibly difficult. It's always easy when you're watching it on screen to go, why why are they meandering across the course? What's this about? But it is a very difficult piece of water, and every year it's different. There is a period of time where the crews are getting used to 
the water and what's happening on any given year, the, you know, based on how much rain or how much flow or, or whatever's going on in the river, it is different year on year. So there is a bit of acclimatization throughout the week. Yeah, and there's been a little bit of wind that just picked up on certain parts. And when you're going up to the start, that's that's the beauty of being a sport that's competed outside, I guess, on an open stretch of river is that you may be on the way to start and you're looking at pockets of maybe where the wind is, but then when you come up the course to race, it may have changed, died up, got worse, whatever it may be, and being able to adapt to that in the moment is really important. Fantastic shot down the river there as we're now riding with the Vesta crew, just moving back onto their station as they're coming down towards the enclosure. And, and Mark, you maybe have a, have a better understanding of this than most. What does it mean for a crew to qualify into the main draw to race here at Henley Regatta? Because we're seeing them on the Tuesday and of course there'll be people that get knocked out today as, as it's likely it will for Vesta. But what does it mean even to make it into the main draw? We were talking about this. We had a kind of Stuart's AGM on the weekend after the draw was done about, you know, the magnitude of what the qualifiers are and how many athletes make it into the Regatta and how many don't. And that moment of just you talk about so I always think about when you talk to people and they said they've raced the regatta and then you ask them like what day did you race what event blah 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 and so many people have just done qualifiers to them that is an accomplishment to do that which is incredible I love that but then to actually get into the regatta that's another story about you know that moment that they got their competitors badge they raced the regatta you know, it doesn't matter about the results as most people it's just they race up the course they did their best performance and that's the story they tell. And I think I, I love that. That's not all about winning all the time because that is a real small population. It's about those stories of that experience of being on the start, being nervous, having the umpire stand up. And I've never seen that before like that, the way they do it. Um, that The booms, trying to avoid those. There's so many things come into it. And it's those stories, I think, that are really important. Yeah, I agree. It is. It, it was so cool seeing the... Um, the pictures from the qualifiers and seeing exactly what it meant to crews as they heard that they were announced as making it through to the main draw and the elation for those crews who came through the qualifiers particularly to make it into the draw and obviously how devastating and crushing that is for the crews the many many crews who, who came to qualifiers and unfortunately didn't make it through this year and, the, and those tears of joy and so, it's just such a mixed emotion there you just want to hug everyone <laughs> it's really weird to say that but because, you know, it's a huge feat to be able to compete in the regatta, you know, have your competitor's badge, you know, walk out on the stage, you know, row up the course. And we have confirmation there coming across the line. It is Thames Rowing Club B, who has moved through with an easy victory over Vesta Rowing Club B in the Whitefold Challenge Cup. 